in the first articulation, the earliest articulation of liberal philosophy, there's an argument that human beings, we can understand what true human nature is if we look at human beings in, in what comes to be known as the state of nature. So if we can see it, or if we can distill the essence of human beings, we would, we would imagine them in a world without politics, in a world without even society, a world where in a sense, relationality doesn't even exist. We're kind of autonomous wholes, um, entire selves that that pursue our own ends and our own good. Uh, and this condition is described as one in which we are all completely free and completely equal. This is a condition of freedom and uh, radical freedom and radical equality. Uh, so there's no real differentiation between us. We'd all just do our own thing. And um, the great French political theorist Bertrand de Juvenel uh, once once uh, summarized this way of thinking as uh, this, these were all the writings of childless men who had forgotten their own childhood, uh, which I, I think is really a perfect, oh, the, a perfect the, summary. The astute feminist critique in there is making me very yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's a. But here's the thing. I mean, anyone who reads this recognizes it's a fiction. Um, but what strikes me is that if, again, I'm, I'm trained in social sciences, even though I'm a political philosopher, one of the kind of continuous and stunning findings, ongoing findings of the social sciences is that the world that we have created is more and more like the state of nature, uh, than, um, the world that preceded it. That, that if we look at what are some of the distinctive features of human beings today, we are more and more alone. We are more and more on our own. We are less and less likely to be those relational creatures we begin by talking about. We have fewer and fewer relationships. We're less likely uh, to get married or to have children. We're less likely to have siblings than previous generations or cousins. Uh, we, are, um, we have fewer friends today than a generation ago. Uh, than people did a generation ago. And we have fewer close friends than people did a, a generation ago. The, the the Surgeon General of the United States just last week or two weeks ago issued a report on the crisis of loneliness in America, that it's a, it's a now a kind of considered to be, according to our government, a, a kind of national crisis, a disease uh, that needs to be treated. And so what's striking about this is that the the theory of the state of nature which anyone who thinks about it for a moment recognizes how absurd it is, has actually been realized not because it's our nature, but by this kind of apparatus, by this massive structure of the modern world that in the, in the aspiration to make ourselves into that creature, we've created these massive structures of politics and government and society and education. Technology. Yeah, and economy and so forth. Um, down into the deepest, most private places that we tend to think of are not political, but which, of course, are always shaped by the, <clears throat> the political order we're in. Uh, and and it's, it was viewing the kind of ongoing accumulation of this kind of data uh, over, you know, more than a decade that I, that I wrote this book um, saying, essentially saying that liberalism, liberalism failed because liberalism has succeeded. Mm -hmm.